the academics. Now, this is where we get in the nitty gritty, where you get into the learning philosophy of both the schools, why it is so important uh, to analyze both these schools, because it pretty much determines the next couple of years. And uh, yeah, we've released a few more polls to see where um, the students are at. Let's begin with Stratford. Now, in terms of a general overview, the academic workload is balanced. That is the best way I can describe it. Uh, hey, Sanket, I see your hand is raised. We will take questions in the end. Uh, don't worry, we will have a, a pretty uh, elaborate Q&A session. So I will answer all your questions in the end. In terms of the general overview for Stratford, the academic workload is very balanced. Uh, by that, I mean 40% of the curriculum covers English language and literature. Uh, and very important here, Stratford has a unified curriculum, but a non-unified teaching guideline. What do I mean by that? That means all the campuses of Stratford have the same curriculum, but at the end of the day, Stratford allows its teachers to teach in their own style, in their own, uh, say, methods. It is very flexible. That is why when I started the enrollment logistics, I recommend it to tour both the schools, especially Stratford, because based on the campus, each campus will have a different faculty. And it is in Stratford specifically where the faculty has the choice to teach the same syllabus in a different way. So each campus has a different uh, quality of education. It's not standardized. Now, if we dive deep into the STEM, Stratford, uh, the math competition accolades are very dependent on the location. So some parents have uh, told us uh, that, say, schools in the San Francisco region have a lot more accolades in math, uh, such as Math Kangaroo, these competitions at an elementary level. So it is very dependent on the campus. Uh, however, it is very well balanced between STEM and arts. Arts, if you take a tour on any Stratford campus, they will for sure uh, tell you that their facilities are much more superior and expensive compared to any other private school. And this is true to a certain extent. Uh, from an early stage onwards, they do emphasize arts a lot and they back it up with the facilities. They give you large um, uh, uh, facilities for arts. They also give you other um, aspects of schooling that uh, basically uh, lead to socialization of the kids at an early age, large playgrounds, all these activities that let, lead to socialization of the kids through communication at a very early age, arts is an integral part of that. And the language, this is very important because the offerings for Stratford are superior to most uh, top private schools when it comes to the languages. Uh, we have surveyed over a hundred parents and here at Think Academy, we have a lot of parents from Stratford, Challenger and even Harker. So we have a very good understanding of where the schools are strong in and Stratford is definitely superior in the languages aspect because they offer Spanish at a very early age. This is important. Now you might think, okay, uh, I don't care too much about that. But if you're looking at that from purely academic perspective, foreign language is a requirement when you go to uh, high school, because when you're applying for colleges, most of the top private uh, colleges, public colleges, Ivy Leagues, they will have a foreign language requirement. And if you start learning this language late, or say even if you learned it early and you did not have a good foundation in this, it typically students take from six months all the way to a year to boost their language skills in the foreign language department. However, kids that go to Stratford are very strong in this at an early age. So they essentially save this time when they go to upper elementary and high school. So this is very important. Now let's get into Challenger. If I had to give you a general overview uh, in terms of the academics, it is a very high workload compared to Stratford. And what do I mean by where, like high workload? If I had to define it for you, it is two tests a week. Uh, some students uh, do have to face about two hours a week. It is common. A lot of parents have said that two hours a week is the going rate, uh, it, even at sometimes for lower elementary. Now, this is where it's very important. The unified curriculum is, is throughout all of Challenger's uh, campuses, similar to Stratford, but not only do they have a unified curriculum, they also have unified teaching guidelines. What do I mean by that is that 
the curriculum is the same across all campuses of Challenger, but the way the school expects the teachers to teach is also standardized across all campuses. So the philosophy is very well defined. Uh, they want the teachers to teach in a certain way. Now with that comes a certain standardization, which makes it easier for parents to know what they can expect from Challenger. The variance between the teaching quality between each campus is less for Challenger because of this very reason, because the teaching is relatively the same. Yes, each campus is different, but if you compare it to Stratford, it is a lot less variance in terms of the teaching quality, especially when you get to STEM, which is where they excel. Challenger curriculum is heavily leaning towards STEM. It is um, similar to most South Asian private schools. Now, within our research, we also, beyond researching the academy parents that we have and we're close to, we also want to get different perspectives from, say, parents that are foreign, that have just moved into uh, the Bay Area from wherever location. A lot of them come from uh, South Asia. So what was shocking to hear is that from all of the South Asian parents that we surveyed, a majority of them said that the schooling in Challenger is similar to a private school in South Asia, wherein there is a strong record of STEM faculty and a strong emphasis on uh, getting a diligent sort of environment, a workload that is high, maintaining a sense of decorum. So this is very similar to the private schools in South Asia. They have a great pool of medalists for math competitions across all campuses. So Math Kangaroo, um, all these elementary school competitions and math specifically, they have great accolades. This comes from their great teaching faculty as well. Most parents have vouched for their STEM faculty being very much superior to other schools. However, language is where the offerings are limited. Challenger, unlike Stratford, has um, no offering for Spanish. The, this is uh, obviously imbalanced. So you can look at it from two angles. You can say that, okay, the development of the child is, is imbalanced and the learning is very much specialized, right? Now that's not good or bad. It depends on your perspective. But the second thing, which is for sure, and this is not like perspective-based, this is not subjective, is that if your foreign language offerings are weak early on, like I said, when you get to upper elementary in high school, you will have to spend more time uh, boosting that language. Because when you apply for colleges, this is a necessity. You need to have a strong foreign language. If you do that early, not only is it easier to do it at an early age, you get more fluent as you go on, and it saves you a lot of time in upper elementary. So Challenger's weakness is definitely in the languages department, and most people will tell you that. So let's look at both of them from a broader perspective. If you look at the academic load, uh, Stratford is certainly less than Challenger. Uh, when it says excellent, good, and average year, again, this is subjective. It is based on what you think is great. But if I had a rate it out of 10, I would say the academic load is a seven mark. It's not less. Uh, it certainly wants you to keep on pace. It expects you to be a student that does not fall behind, but it is not a lot of workload. Challenger, on the other hand, is a lot of workload. As I said, students are expected to have sometimes even two tests a week consistently. And even at a lower elementary stage, uh, students have a complaint about, uh, say, stress levels being high, at, especially at the, at the early elementary levels. So that is something to note. Language, Stratford does edge out on an average, uh, as you can see, compared to Challenger for the reasons we discussed before. Foreign language department is much more stronger in Stratford. and the curriculum devoted for languages, specifically English, is about 40% in Stratford. So the emphasis on communication skills, interpersonal skills is high over here. STEM, I would say Challenger edges, a, edges out pretty comfortably. It is a, a straight 10. There is great reviews for the faculty consistently across all the campuses, and it is more standardized. So what happens is when you have a school that is very defined in its philosophy, you get students that know what to expect. So it creates a learning environment in which everyone is on the same page. And when that happens, you can specialize very easily. 
that is one of the reasons why the STEM edges out because yes, the faculty is great, but everyone knows what they're there for. So the STEM does edge out over there. Arts, like I said, because the emphasis is more balanced in Stratford and the facilities are there for it at an early stage. Stratford does edge out on that. And the accolades both have been given a score of eight, but it depends on what perspective you look at it from. The accolades are more balanced for Stratford. So you will have, say, the same number of achievements for math competitions like Math Kangaroo, but also for debates, um, model United Nations. So it is very uh, parsed out evenly, I would say. But for Challenger, it is uh, heavily uh, in terms of the math competitions that they're winning. So that is for their academics. But if you look at the extracurricular activities, that is also one of the most important parts of your schooling experience, right? Uh, the, the academics is one part, the extracurricular is where the students get to venture into their interests, see what they like. Uh, this is more for long-term progress and growth. If you look at Stratford, their extracurricular activities are such that it poses for a very overall and holistic development of the child. If you go for a tour, that is something they'll, they'll, they'll say again and again uh, that it is holistic development. They try to strengthen all different aspects of the child. Because of this very reason, some elite private high schools, if you are gonna go from a private elementary school to private high schools. This is a very niche approach. I'm not saying everyone does this, but if you do, then some elite private schools do prefer students uh, from Stratford over Challenger uh, because of the expectation that the uh, students are more all round. The emphasis on team building is a lot more in Stratford. So the emphasis on team, based on the extracurriculars is a lot more. They try to encourage leadership skills, a lot of teamwork, interpersonal skills. Uh, so all the extracurricular activities are based on teamwork. That is why the school has a vast area of accolades across math competitions, debates, other extracurricular activities. Uh, it's, it's very well balanced. Like I said, this is not the case in Challenger um, if you look at all the campuses on average. Uh, if I had to generalize the learning philosophy and the extracurriculars are taught in a more militaristic way. Some parents have characterized it as rote learning. So memorization perspective, right? For example, I myself uh, went to a very typical South Asian private school in India. And what happens with specialization is that you know that you want to focus in the sciences and mathematics. That's where your passions lie. And it gives you the time uh, to say, venture into interests that you know you have. Say, I will focus on math competitions and okay, I do like say tennis, so I will do that on the side. So it is a very um, defined sort of framework on how you would split your time. That goes to show that this is all your perspective, right? If you think your child is best suitable to go through a learning philosophy that is more materialistic, that emphasizes on decorum and discipline, and you think those are the characteristics you want in your child, Challenger does offer that, right? It emphasizes on individual academic excellence. Uh, the switch to private high school might be more challenging for some schools due to enrollment preference. This is very important. As I said before, Stratford, some private elite high schools do prefer Stratford kids, uh, but, Again, take this with a grain of salt because it depends what school, right? Each school, just like Stratford and Challenger, even at the high school level has its own philosophy. So for example, if you take a school like Basis, they are very much focused on the sciences. They will have no problem getting a kid from Challenger because they know that these kids are great in the STEM field. Number two, at the end of the day, if you are trying to get into a private high school in the future, you will have to go through an interview process. And even though you are from Stratford or Challenger, at the end of the day, going to a certain school is not gonna be evidence for your great communication skills or interpersonal skills. Showcasing your communication, uh, leadership, teamwork by having a conversation at the end of the day, that's how you convey them. So if you think your kid is great in that department already, 
and you want to specialize and say something in the science field, Challenger will have no problem getting to even the most elite high schools at a private level. So let's summarize the key differences. Uh, over here, Stratford is focused on team building with the extracurricular activities. You have debates, spelling bees, math competitions, all of these with the mindset that, hey, we're working as a team. So you, even uh, competitions like Math Olympiad are very famous in Stratford because it is a team-based math competition, right? And Challenger is more focused on individual excellence. That is why you will see a lot of gold medalists for say Math Kangaroo uh, from Challenger. Not to say that it's not present in Stratford, but if you're comparing, uh, it does edge out for Challenger a little bit. Stratford is more likely to have expansive facilities for the arts and even for recreation to promote socialization of the child. You want to have your kid have some social skills at a very early age. So we'll give you all the facilities you need to do so. And finally, Challenger does offer some extracurriculars, but some of them are external. So when you go for a tour, they might tell you that, hey, we offer X, Y, Z, but take that with a grain of salt, ask them, okay, are you offering it or are you giving the opportunity for say a third party person to come in and offer it? Because the problem with that is, is when the school is offering it themselves, they make time for it in their schedule. But if they are having someone come in and offer it, then it really is you balancing your own schedule. Sometimes you won't even have the time to do it. So take that with a grain of salt and make sure you ask that question when you're touring the campus. In terms of what's common for both of them, um, it's, it's pretty clear that both of them are superior to the public school core curriculum uh, in the Bay Area and other locations as well, they're one to two years ahead. Um, this is this is uh, pretty much standard across uh, most of the curriculum. You can see a, a major difference between both of these. They do have a higher level and quality of teaching. They are highly dependent on location. But like I said, this is more for the case of Stratford because of the non-unified teaching style. Both of them do offer a better value for money compared to the elite, elite private schools schools like Harker. Um, in purely from an ROI perspective, yes, Harker might give you better admissions and those sort of things, but not at the cost that it demands. Uh, so that is the difference and common, uh, those are the difference and, and, and commonalities between these two at an academic and learning and extracurricular standpoint. But 